Another design feature to consider, which I think can often get overlooked, especially if you're getting a custom board, is how the board flexes. So if you imagine you're applying pressure to the board in a turn, what you want to happen is you want the board to very slightly flex, like elastic, and then bounce back. Um, so that makes a, can make a really big difference to the performance of a board. There's a couple of ways you can get around the flex. First is the glass, um, how thick a glass job you have. So all the pros have um, really thin glass jobs on their boards, so they're not as, not as durable, but they just flex really nicely. Um, obviously, the opposite side to that is if you have really thick glass and make your board really durable, um, it's not going to flex. And I've recently had an experience with that where I was trying to board out, had a really thick glass job on it, and it just felt horrible. It felt really wooden and just unresponsive. Um, so obviously flexes can be really important. Now this is a, an important issue for someone who's getting more volume in the board if you're a bigger person because you're going to inevitably end up with quite a thick surfboard. It's one of the ways you're going to get the volume in there but that can have a negative effect of making the board flex less. One clever way I've seen to get around that and it's, I think is the only person that's done it so far um, out of the big brands is Matt Barless as Reduce the amount of stringer running through the board, so it's a thinner stringer, and the reason he's done that is to give the board more flex. So his thinking behind that is, the thickness running through the board is going to give it the strength and prevent it from snapping, and then reducing the stringer is going to still allow it to flex more. So it's just an one added dimension to consider when you're getting your custom board. You need to accept the fact you're going to have to get a bit of thickness in there somewhere, but how do you counteract the flex of the board? Alright, so to summarise, identify a local shaper or a shaper that has experience shaping for someone that needs more volume. They don't necessarily have to be a bigger person. As long as they've got experience doing it, you'll be fine. Identify what kind of waves you're going to be riding your board in and Depending on your personal preference, that might then influence your volume. You want the volume to be one of your starting points. Um, one thing I didn't mention about volume, different people have different preferences where they sit with their volume. Some people like to come quite a bit lower than their recommended volume. Some people are more comfortable going a bit higher. It can have different effects. I think for me, one of the biggest effects with coming above or below the volume versus your weight is you have more almost more drawn out, I'd say maybe more stylish turns if you're getting more volume in your board. But then the opposite end of that is if you come down too much with your volume, and I've seen this with quite a few bigger surfers, you come down to a certain point and the, the board looks almost just too sketchy and too skitty under your feet and you're just losing all the style. So you've got to, you've got to think, do you, want, do you want to have that added performance um, but kind of lose a bit of style and make it more difficult on yourself paddling in. Um, do you want more volume, lose as much performance, but maybe have nicer drawn out turns? Um, so that's one thing to consider with volume. Um, once you've done that, look at dimensions. You have to accept the fact you've got to get the foam in there somewhere. So you've got to look at, you know, what are you going to sacrifice to do that? Um, a lot of what I've been saying is either based on my own opinion or the discussions I've had from my videos or on my forum. Um, so it's just basically based on that. It's, I'm, I'm, I've never admit to being a, a shaper or anything. So there's a lot of other factors that I've completely missed out of this. And if you're going to get a custom, you need to have those kind of long discussions and meetings with your shaper to nail down exactly what you want. Um, a massive thank you to iSurf Tribe for hosting me on their channel. Um, so a lot of the inspiration for me doing this and starting my own channel um, was looking at a lot of the videos on that, a lot of Moy's videos. Um, he's a bigger guy and he's talked about kind of some of his experience kind of surfing as a bigger guy. So that inspired me. I wanted to kind of share some of my experiences. It's really hard to find information for, you know, if you're looking for a board with more volume, there's not much out there. There's very limited info and very limited products. So I wanted to kind of impart some of my knowledge and my experience and uh, shout out to you guys. So thanks iSurf Tribe and thanks for watching. All right.
Thanks, Scott. That was some awesome information. And honestly, um, it gave me a lot of ideas on some tweaks I want to do on my next custom surfboard, which I'm probably going to get made in the next uh, probably two to three weeks. So I'll keep you guys updated. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to leave the link to his YouTube in the comments as well as the description. So go give him some support. It's really cool to see somebody in the surf category who's niched down into something. So he's really niching into the big guy kind of field. I do cover that a lot, but you know, I'm kind of all over the place. So if you're a big guy, definitely want to go over, subscribe to his channel. Uh, I think he also has a forum on Facebook, which you can, you can find at his um, channel. And uh, let's give him some love. And thanks again, Scott. And uh, maybe we'll have him on again. Let us know. Let's hear it in the comments what you guys think. And as always, Pura Vida and Aloha.